Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen, it's Egal Talks with Juan. We're back again with another video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about Arsenal's fixtures for the month of April as we have nine games that we're going to have to look at and play in this month. It's absolutely ridiculous. In a span of four weeks, we would have gone through nine games, including two Champions League games and what is that? Five Premier League games. We're going to run through all the fixtures and talk about where we think we can, uh, where where we think it might be difficult, where we think it might be easy, how we think we're going to do in our next game against Luton, of course. And in a, in the span of one week, we're going to have Luton, Brighton, and Bayern. It's going to be very interesting to see how Arsenal do and can we survive throughout this tough period. We're also going to talk about Bukayo Saka's fit, fitness. We got an update to see if he's going to be available for the next game. And also, there's a couple of transfer rumors that we're going to have to get into. But before we go any further, please do subscribe to the video. We're currently on 26.5K subscribers. We're currently literally 50 more subscribers away from getting to 27K. Let, sorry, what am I saying? We're, 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 we're 50% way there to get to 27K. We need about 400 more subscribers, but we can get there. Let's hit the just hit those like buttons and, and subscribe buttons and we can get there, guys. And also... Don't forget, if you're watching this on the playback, leave a comment down below. Let me know how do you think Arsenal will do in the next coming games as we do have some difficult fixtures. But we got my boy Deo in the building. Deo, how you doing, bro? I'm good. I'm good. I'm gassed, man. This is this is what we've been waiting for. This is what we've been waiting for. Like, everybody's talking the, the smack of us. I'm like, yes, we want to be up there with the big boys. We want to, we want to play the Lutins and play the Bayerns two days' time. That's what we want to be doing. This is what this is what Arsenal is about, you know. Like, this is what we should be we should have been doing all these years, right? Because the longer you're in the thicker thing, thicker things, the, the, the easier it is for you to become one of the winners. If you drop off and then you come back every four, five, six years, ten years, twenty years, it makes it harder, man. But as long as you stay in the you stay in the, you stay in the fight, yo. So this is what we've been waiting for, man. I'm gassed. I'm gassed. I'm gassed for this April. I have a whole a whole calendar that I designed and pulled up for all the games, starting with Luton and how we're going to play two days of rest, marking out the rest days, checking out how many days they need to rest and how many days they need to do light sessions, you know, like those kind of things. Those are the important things, man. And I, but and that, I think, means, that means you don't really get to train and work on tactics during those since you only have two days in between. Yes, you don't, because the thing is, by, by default, let, let's use an example. Trostad, for example, is technical. He knows the techniques that he needs to do. You know? Salute, man. Like, Trostad is technical already. Uh, why is this guy? I need to turn this thing off here. Sorry, my bad. No, nah, I don't even know where you turned that on. It's it's like... So, basically, my camera is a black magic camera, but it's running through my um, laptop, which is a Mac. And because it's a Mac, the, the Mac um, software uses the same thing like the phone. So, my phone is here, Right? But then the, the all those emojis and stuff on the phone actually work off my computer as well. So I just turn it off. <laughs> it doesn't work for me. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, yeah. who cares? Yeah, I'll say, and I'll say, like, you know, like the players already know what to do now. It's about the strategy of who we're playing. You're playing Luton now. How do we go about it? Then light, you know, light workout, stay in form. This is not where you train for like you're you're not training to to beat looting. You're, you're, you're strategizing on how to beat them. Who's in form and training? You'll be able to tell who can play a whole 90 minutes, who can play, you know, 45 and, you know, based on the formations that we want to go with. So, yeah, man, uh, I'm gassed. All right, let's get let's get into it though. People in the comment section, hope you guys are doing well. Do me a favor, hit that like button right now, as we only got about fifty of you guys on all platforms. And all the people watching on on Twitter, come join us over on YouTube, as we are live on YouTube. And I'm going to be ending the Twitter post right now, as I want you guys coming over to YouTube to watching us for the remainder of the video. Big up to everyone watching on Twitter though right now. But yeah, let's get let's get into it, boys. We got a lot. I think. The best way to start is I'm going to pull up the actual fixtures and we can go through them one by one and just kind of talk about the fixtures. As I know you got your graphic, but I'm just going to put up uh, yeah. you know, Arsenal post that image with, with all the fixtures. I think that's the best way to do it because, of course, it just, it, just, it just has everything there for you to see. It's, it's quite clear. So one second. Let me pull this up. Arsenal's account. We go to images. Arsenal, the picture with Ben White. And here we go. Let's get it started. Um, unless you want to send me your thing. Uh, or actually, I could just go on Google, but I don't want to do that right now. Let's go straight. Boom. So here we go. So first, we have the Luton Town game. What do you think about tomorrow's game? 
because I'm looking at that game tomorrow and I'm and I'm really not too concerned. I'm looking at Luton Town. We're at home. People were talking about we weren't entertaining versus um, people were saying we were not entertaining versus Man City, right? Yes, we yeah. weren't entertaining versus Man City. That was not that was not what we we're going for. What we we're going for was to try to be effective. We weren't looking to be entertaining. But this Luton Town team, this is the this is the team that they're expect re, expected to go with. Ross Barkley, of course, being their main threat, one of their main uh, their main uh, outlets uh, outlets for assists and chance creation. Morris being their, one of their main guys for goals, and of course, when when we went to their house, I think this guy gave us some problems with set pieces. He did, he did. So yeah. we need to we need to keep an eye out on him. But at home, I think we're currently a different team. The team that faced them away that time, we were kind of faltering in the league. We were, we were we were going through a rough patch. We weren't we were struggling to break down teams and score goals. Luckily, we scored three goals on that day. And Declan Rice yeah. got us. Declan Rice and Kai Havers got us late goals to get us back and win the game. But right now, I'm not too concerned. We're at home. We sh we're massive favorites. They're huge underdogs. If Luton Town were to take any points off us, it just it just makes whatever we did at Man City pointless. It's very true. I mean, like it's it's easy to to not be um, worried. But what I normally say, like, this is something that I say to myself every year. The last 10 games of the season, every game is a, is a game you have to worry about. Starting with the Man City game all the way till the end of the season. The last 10 games of the season, it doesn't matter because at this point, everybody's clawing for whatever it is that they need to get. Luton is trying to claw out of that relegation zone. We're trying to claw into that title to, to, to get it this year. So everybody is literally, you know, clawing for it. Yeah, yes. Yeah, um, school X. Yeah, whatever. I'll address. I'll address you later. I predicted three one. We did. We still didn't lose. Go on. Go on. Try again. Um, mm -hmm. As nah, I say, ignore it. Because nah, at the end of the day, people are gonna people are gonna try to say, "Oh, ha ha ha, you're wrong." But it's like my prediction yeah. is my prediction because I believe in the capacity of my boys to be able to go there and get that kind of score line. But your prediction think is irrelevant at this point because, yeah. regardless, you're happy with the result. Bottom line, yeah. So, like if I said, you like your team to lose, but then your team wins, are people gonna say, "Haha, you were wrong"? You know, that's exactly. You know, that's exactly what Mikel said to 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 a, a journalist who asked him about him. Oh, so last season when Saliba was injured, uh, was that why you guys fell off? He said, "Well, there was narratives about how Saliba was injured last season. So now that Saliba is not injured this season, will there be narratives about how well he's doing?" He said, "You guys need to write the same narratives," and he walked away. I was like, "Good stuff," which is what it is. My prediction is my prediction. That's Dyer's prediction. I am not the players on the pitch, but I believe in what they can do. So I can predict what I believe they can do. Anyway, let's go back to Luton. So for me, I think Luton is going to be a tough game at home or not because of the run of games we're going to have. So we have to be able to, you know, man-manage properly, manage the time of the players. I would honestly, if I were Ateta, rest Bukayo Saka in this game. Because our next game after this is, um, if I'm not mistaken, is is Bayern, right? Let me let me pull up that. Let me pull up my. Uh, I'm pulling up on my side, anyways. Not 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 to confuse anybody. Uh, our here. next game after that is Brighton. Sorry, Brighton. My bad. Yeah, I need to start it with a B. I didn't look at it. We got so, Brighton. We got Brighton on Saturday. Yeah. So my thing is, I would rest. I would rest Bukayo Saka. I would rest Martinelli as well. I would start. For this for this game against Luton. And I know people will say, oh, it's crazy, it's crazy. I know we have the capacity to be able to score and get this game over the line with a 2-0, you know, quick, a quick 2-0. Um, I would start this game with a, with, with uh, Eddie Nketiah. I would start with Gabriel Jesus. And, you know, I'll, I'll bring in Eddie, Gabriel, and Trossard. I'll let, them, I'll let them start. If they can't get anything done by the first half, then I'll bring in the other boys. I'm like, you know, hey, Martinelli get in there, um, Saka get in there, push Havertz up front, and then drop, you know, somebody else right behind him. And then and let's just, you know, do it, get it, and, and get it over. Would and done you with start? It. Would you start? I think people need to be careful because I'm seeing too many disrespectful lineups. Like, we cannot take out too much of our team. First of all, this is not a game where Ramsdale is going to be coming in. So forget about that. I, Right, this there's no Ramsdale for the rest of the season. He's not playing. Ben White is not getting dropped. What we can do is we can sub him off late in the game if need be. I think here's where you can make a change. 
take out Jorginho, put Partey in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying like, yeah, for those kind of roles, Jorginho for Partey, but everybody keeps saying no. Jorginho you know, for Partey. And, and I'm Jesus, tired of hearing that. No. Jesus I'm, for Saka. Yeah. Trossard for Martinelli. Uh, and, uh, Martinelli Martinelli didn't play the last game. So technically... He, did. he, played, he played about 15 minutes. So, I mean, I, I, I want him to rest some more. The reason we rested him and only played him 15 minutes is because we know that he wasn't 100%. Because if he was, he'd start. But we need to be very careful. We cannot go out there and put out a very disrespectful lineup. It's not a disrespectful, not a disrespectful lineup. Defensively, the exact same team just put in just put in uh instead of KVR, but, maybe you put in Zinchenko to give you more control. But that's what I'm saying. I'm saying if we rest KVR and put in Zinchenko, we rest Jorginho, we put in Thomas Pate. On the right hand side, I put Jesus for Saka. On the left hand side, I will still play Martinelli for like 45 minutes. That's too minutes. many changes. But I'm here, okay. I'm okay with changing Kavior, Jorginho, and Saka. I'm I think I think I'm if, Rice you, Odegaard, if you change, on, I think if you change Kavior, Jorginho, Rice, Martinelli, Saka, it's too much disruption to the first I, team. I did. I did change Rice. You, you you missed the spine of the team stays. You wanted. You said you suggested Zinchenko. I was going to leave Kavio, Gabriel, Saliba, and White, Raya. My back four solid. The defense that we can depend on is solid. So you're only changing I'm, these three. I'm, listen, I'm keeping Rice in the game. I am resting Saka for one half of the game. I'm going to bring him in so he still gets minutes. But I would rather he rest because of the fact that he came out a little injured. Same thing with Martinelli. He'll play in half, but I'll rest him for the first half because he came in only for 15 minutes, which means he's not 100. I'll put Trossard on the left, right? I will keep Havertz up front. I'll bring Partey in for Jorginho. I leave Odegaard and Rice in the midfield with Partey, right? So all I'm saying is, let these guys rest a little bit because we have a run of games in April that will burn them out, you know. And Tommy Yasu as well is there, so I can rest Kirio for Tommy Yasu. That's a solid back for any time with Rice still in front of them and uh and Pate. Remember, Rice and Pate will still be in the middle, Rice, Pate, um, Odegaard, and then I would go, to, you know, Havertz in the front, Trossard on the left, and then on the right, Gabriel Jesus. So I'm just resting Martinelli and, and Saka because I think both of them with the slight injuries that they have, the slight knocks, they need that little rest before the big, big games. If we use them in this Luton game, that is actually a, a it's going to be a hard-hitting game. Luton is a physical team. If any, if they get any more injured than they already are, they might be out for Bayern. We can't, we can't, we can't okay, afford that. We can't afford that. Let's let's check what's the update on Bakayo Saka's injury status. Now, Arsenal, eight hours ago, gave us a quick little update on Bakayo Saka. They gave us a quick little update on some of the other guys. Big up, uh, everyone, in the comment section. I see you guys in the comment section. Uh, if you guys have any questions or any comments, we're going to come to you guys in a second. Um, injury update on Saka, Martinelli, and Timber. So this was what was said, I think, today by Mikel Arteta in the yeah. press conference. Bakayo Saka is returning from injury to uh, return return from injury to feature in the Man City game Sunday. He came off in the 78th minute of the game. He received treatment uh, from the physio. The, the uh, what do you call it? The game was thick and fast. Mikel Arteta has another pre uh, another game, obviously, and Bakayo Saka would be fine. And he admitted that he would see how he. How far, what? How he fared on the grass at Sobai Reality Training Ground Center first. Okay. So then he's going to check how he does today in the training ground. Yeah, I read, I read that article today. Um, Mikel said... Second is fine. Obviously, we haven't trained. We've we have only, uh, recovered. only recovered. It's a short uh, live session today to prepare for the game. But we'll see whether he is in the best condition to start or not. There we Personally, go. I don't think he should start. That's my. That's exactly my my thoughts exactly because we have to manage our. And you see, I, I keep saying this. If we have um a two zero lead over Luton, right at the Emirates, and our defense is solid, like we already know this season, we know that they're not going to score us because we're not going to let it happen. We've got Declan Pate and our back four there, right? At this point, I don't mind even resting a Kai for Brighton. I'm bringing in a. Eddie, let him come and give fresh legs, run around. Oh, no. No, come no, no. On, listen, really? listen. It's not disrespectful to manage your play as well. The problem we're going to have, Igal, watch this. I'm going to predict Three something. changes, fine. No, not three. I'm saying if we're already leading and there's 30 minutes more, or th like if, if you're already leading 3-0 against Luton, 
why do you still want your players to, your players that you need for important games to run out the whole 90 minutes? When you, you can keep your defense there, which are the people who are really getting the work done. I'm not changing the defenders. Tommy Asu is still on the pitch. Gabriel is on the pitch. Saliba is on the pitch. White is on the pitch. Declan is on the pitch. Partey is on the pitch. Those guys are on the pitch. Those guys are not going to be changed. But then I'm resting my forwards because I've realized something. In the last few games, we've seen that the Arsenal defense is consistent and sure. Our attack from January was consistent for a little bit and eventually started dropping off against Brentford. You could see that they, they need a reboost. So we need to rejig them, allow other people to take their position 30, 25 minutes at the end of the game, lock up the game, show it up. Worst case scenario, if it's that bad, I'll be like, you know what, bring in Kiria as well, take out another midfielder and just show up the game. After all, we did it against Man City. We didn't let them score us. So if we need to do that after scoring two, three goals against Luton, big deal. At this point, I'm not looking for flashy football, man. Egal, I'm looking for wins. I'm not looking for flashy football anymore. You've shown me that you can do flashy football. Back to back to back, 5-0, 6-0, 4-1, 3-1. You've shown me I believe in you. Right now, I need pragmatic football. It's got to be pragmatic, you know. We, we just need people that can hold the ball and run out the game and run out the time. They do that, boom, solid. On to the next game. Players get off the pitch early. They get to sit in the ice bath. They get to rest their muscles. They get to do an, a, a better training session the next day. Remember, there's two days in between these games. So the amount of the extra, an extra hour or an extra 10 minutes in the ice bath makes a big difference, man. It makes a big difference. So I'm, I'm worried about the timing in between the games and how they're coming thick and fast. We haven't had this before where we're playing Champions League and you know Premiership at the same time. Um, at this stage, of, I mean, late, as this late in the season, this is the first time these boys are doing it. If we don't manage them properly, if, the, if, if Arteta doesn't manage them properly, any kind of injuries creep in, we're done. We're done, you know? And that's where we then realize that we, don't, we now don't have anybody but the eddies and code that we, didn't, we refuse to use. You know? Okay. Let me just say this. I'm looking. I'm looking. Uh, I'm looking at our squad. I hear you. There needs to be some squad management. This is. These are up, these are upcoming games, and I think we can we can we can somewhat make some changes throughout that uh, throughout these games. Now, Luton Town. What you can do is you can give Bakao Saka rest. And you can you can bring Martinelli back into the fold, right? And then, and you could even bring in Trussard and give and give Kai Havertz a rest, maybe, or somebody like that. Because Luton Town, they have tall guys in their back line. Maybe Kai Havertz actually would be very useful. This is, may not be the game for Trussard. You know what I mean? Keep Martinelli, bring Martinelli back in. Have Jesus, Martinelli, Kai Havertz as the midfield. I mean, uh, as the attack, the midfield. You bring Thomas Partey in. Let him get some. Let him get some game time at home, and then the game away. At, at at Brighton, I'm not gonna lie to you. Even though it's just before the Bayern game, I'm I'm taking this game as a very serious outfit away from home. Brighton, Brighton are no joke. They're a tough. Uh, they're a tough opponent. Yep. They're really good. We need to be playing as close to possible as our best uh, as our best team that we have available on the day, right? So on Definitely. that day, I would play Jorginho. On that day, I would play. I would play. What do you call it? Saka. I play Saka. I'll play, he'll be available by then. Like yeah. Saka just needs so to that's forward, when you, you know? play Saka. That's and what I'm then, saying. And then at home versus Bayern Munich, hopefully we don't have many injuries against uh, Brighton. We I'll have play enough my strongest team. To, we have enough time to recover. You play the same team that you're gonna play against Bayern, against Brighton, and then boom. I don't think there's the thing is the only issue is do you start Jorginho for two games straight against Brighton and Bayern? I mean, to be honest with you, it's all dependent on his performances. G Jorginho has been consistent every time we've called on him. You know, barring that that slip he had against Tottenham earlier in the season, I I, I can't really point at something that Jorginho has done wrong this season that has cost us. So I would say, um, yeah, I'll play him back to back. And let's, here's the let's thing. Get, let's get through some of these comments quickly. Uh, big up, Dayo. Big up, Iga. Hope you're doing well. Some people talking about the 3-1. It's Brighton away, Bayern at home. I yeah. know. Tom Yasu and Partey start. I wouldn't be surprised if KBR gets some rest. Or yep. even Ben White. Yep. Or even Ben White. Uh, no Eddie. 
uh, with Jesus, Trossard, and Kai Havertz. Okay, so let me let me let me reverse. Let me. Say, doesn't need to yeah, be. No, let me team. say let me say that again. It's, I think people are just not listening. I said I would start Jesus, Kai, and Trossard. If it's thirty minutes to the end of the game and we scored three goals, for example, as an example, let's just say we've been able to score three goals. I want Jesus. I mean, I want Trossard players that I would be able to use in the game against Bayern and Brighton to rest. I will bring in Eddie for 25 minutes. To, he, he, he might not score, but he knows how to do a holder play. Eddie is, Eddie is physical now. We've seen what he can do with the ball. He might not be able to score, but at least... He, and then I keep my defenders and my two pivots. So that way, regardless, it's still, it's still Pate and Rice in the game and my back four. So the whole idea is to get players to rest early, just to think that we're just going to run through these boys over the next nine games and the Champions League games. We we will be very sorry because we've not we haven't done this before. We haven't. So it's the first time we have to find a way to manage them. And which means you have to find a way to use every single squad member, whether it's for 15 minutes so that this person can get out early and get treatment, whether it's for 20 minutes so that this person can actually rotate and play in a, a less stressful role. You know, that's all I'm saying. Like if I have to bring in Kirio and uh and Tommy Yasu <laughs> after we scored two goals. And remove <laughs> strikers. I'm playing the six-two. I'll do it. Like right now, it's not about. Um, I didn't say Enketia to start in the first one. I mentioned three things. Capo, is, you like remove. You people need to stop doing that. I said I would start Trossard on the left. I would start um, Havertz in the middle, and then I would put Jesus on the right. But halfway through the game, I would bring Enketia in so I can rest Havertz. That's mm -hmm. what I said. I, let's let, let's just go through it though. So for me, I'm gonna do three to four changes max versus Luton. I'm gonna go Brighton. What I'm gonna do is this is the game where Trussard could potentially play against his former team. He knows some of these players' weaknesses. That's where you start Trussard. And I'm not starting him up top. But at what point do we give the likes of? So I. Uh, this is where uh, this is where the question comes. Where do we give some of these guys? Where do we give some of these guys breaks? The uh, the likes of Gabriel Magales, Saliba, Rea, Rice, Odegaard, and Havertz. They basically start every game. Yeah, but here's the thing: like, if I'm three zero up and it's fifteen more minutes, those fifteen minutes count. If it's fifteen minutes, I bring in Tommy Yasu for White. I bring in Kirio for okay, Kirio, like we, we said, I bring in Zinchenko no, but for Kirio. I, my my thing is more about the likes of Gabriel Magales, Saliba, Rice. We, do if, they uh, maybe Rice gets substituted? But in what in what case do we substitute either of Gabriel or Saliba? It's going to be hard to substitute either of those two guys. But I I will say this though, in a game if Arsenal picks up any pace like we did, remember how we picked up pace in January? Let's see against Luton in the first half we scored. 5-0. Luton is not coming back on 5-0 at the Emirates. Right? That's not... We've, we've seen Arsenal do that before. Let's just say in a perfect ideal world, that happens. That's a good game for you to say, okay, you know what? Saliba, Gabriel, Kirill, go and play um, Gabriel's position. Let me bring in Zinchenko on the left for control. For Saliba, I can drop in um, um, Tomiyasu there. He plays centre-back too. I can leave White on the pitch a little bit for now. And then towards the end of the game, probably even bring in... Um, Tell Partey to play right back, throw Jorginho in for the last 20 minutes as well. So Jorginho and, and um uh, uh Rice would then hold the you know the as a as a double pivot because we've changed our full back four. So those 15, 20 minutes will help these boys. They haven't had any rest all season, and it's about to come thick and fast, you know. So I just think that there's there's ways to kind of it, if things are perfect for us, like I said, let's say we're looting four or five goals before the first half, they're not coming back from that. That's a good game to give the boys an extra 20 minutes of, you know, the last 20 minutes of the game, rest them. Um, so, you know, it's if you bring in Zinchenko, you can put in Kibio to play for Gabriel. Kibio can drop into that middle for Gabriel. That means Gabriel can rest 15, 20 minutes. Saliba, you can drop in Tomiyasu there for him because Tomiyasu has played that role many times as well. I mean, he's played in that role in his former club. So uh, ben, ben White can play that role as well. You know, I wish, I wish Timba was back fully fit because then we can actually do a real good rotation in the back, but we don't have that. So um, Timba is getting to play with the under 21 a few games before they would give him a run at the, you know, because he hasn't had any game time.
So, so you know, yeah. I mean, those are the kind of games we hope for so we can make those changes. That's what I kind of think okay. can happen. All right. Let, let's enough about the substitutions and everything. Let's get back to the games. So we've spent a lot of time speaking about Luton, Brighton, and Bayern. I feel like we haven't really spent a lot of time speaking about the remaining. What is that? Four or five games. One, one, two, three, four, five. Damn. So we have a lot of games, bro. We yep. have a lot of games this month. Yep. We have a lot of games this month. So we, we already have, so you got Luton, Brighton, and Bayern, right? We already had the game versus, uh, versus uh, thing also. City. City. So that's, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Where's the ninth game? I thought we had nine games. Before the um, before the Tottenham game, we have uh, no. So you think you, City is the first one? City was the first game. So City, City, Luton. That's what makes it nine. Oh, so what, was City on the first of April? Yeah, City was. Yes. Well, when was City? City was a couple of days ago, right? Yeah, yeah City, City was on no, the first. No, City was no. City was thirty first on the thirty first. So it was. So the games were from the thirty first of like they were saying from the thirty first all the way to our last game before to the game before Tottenham. We're gonna have nine games. So City okay. was so counting now, as part of those games, yeah. So now, once say after ne- when we get to next week Tuesday, we would have gotten through the Luton game, which I expect to be a win. The Brighton game, I expect to be a win, and the Bayern game, I expect to be a win. I don't at know home. about you. At home, yeah. yeah. I think we, can, I think we can do it at home. I mean, here, here's where, here's where it starts to get tough. Uh, Aston Villa at home, and then Bayern we're gonna away. Have to, we're gonna have to win. But it's going to be tough. Aston Villa have always made it tough for all their opponents. We're yeah. going to see tomorrow if they can do something against City. They 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 beat City earlier in the year also. And then we have Bayern away. I think Bayern away. We have to take the same approach we did against City. That, Basically, you know, I was, don't just, lose. I was just about to say it wasn't even like I was just about to say. You know how we criticized Arteta all season. He doesn't have any other style of play. Arteta doesn't know how to play in a different way. He's always playing in the same way. And then he shows us this against City. I didn't like it. It didn't look good. I boasted about a 3-1 victory. And I really, really believe that the boys could do it. But, you know, Ateta had a different approach. I'm glad he has this in his toolbox. Because teams like Bayern, we can frustrate them at their own home playing this way. Like, we can literally frustrate them at their own home playing this way. If we can play them at the Emirates without their fans, which is a good thing for us, and we can get our points at home, be it one or two goals, because Bayern is a big team. Whatever it is that we can get at home, we, we just go there and we do we do the Mourinho and, and Diego Simeone, dark arts, and just, we don't only pack the bus, we pack the aeroplane. We pack the Emirates jets that took us there in front of the goalpost. <laughs> <laughs> Not just the bus. We bring the plane from the airport, the Emirates jets. We put it in front of the goalpost right there. Let's see what happens. Be- look, because at this stage, man, Igal, I... I I just want pragmatic football. Just win. Let people say whatever they want to say. If we're winning, I'm good. I don't even care. You've showed me good football. I know I know my boys can do it. I, I, I you know, I didn't know Ateta could play this way. Honestly, against it, I did not know Ateta has the sense to play defense. I'm telling you, in my head, I was like, we're going to go there. We're just going to show them we're better. You know? And everybody saying Bayern is yeah I know Bayern isn't as good but even though we're talking about the you know they're they're, they're we're go- going to Bayern is not going to be easy you're going to we're, get we're going to play what I consider haram ball yeah so look, that's how we have to do it going forward yeah yeah the haram ball is gonna have to come out every time we face these these teams away from home and at home we do what we did to Liverpool. Over two tried. legs, yeah. So what we did to Liverpool at home is what we're going to try to do to Bayern. And and what we did to City away is what we're going to try to do to Bayern. And how did we approach the Liverpool away game? I felt like we were a lot more aggressive in our attack against Liverpool. City, we weren't really that aggressive. Defensively, we were solid in both games. We, we were at home as well, remember that. So you, you, No, no, no. Have... I'm talking about the Liverpool away. Liverpool away, we, we, we attacked, but we attacked... Cautiously. We scored a set piece goal and then we defended for our lives. Yeah, that's something like which is I think what we were looking for against City as well. 
Arteta set us up for the counter. And a lot of those counters, like, how I wish that we had won a, a bunch more set pieces on the edge of the box, you know. I think maybe we could have done some damage with that. But, you know, it is what it is. We didn't lose eventually. Fingers crossed. We go on to see uh, what the boys can do. Um, I know everybody's saying Bayern is not as good as they used to be. But let's be honest, man. Bayern is still Bayern. And they have some really amazing players. So, I think Mikel Arteta's performance for Man City proved to me that he's ready to compete in the Champions League this year. He is ready. To, I mean, he's he, we're in the quarterfinals. He's already competed. No, when I say like compete, I, I mean I know what you mean against the top mean. teams because yeah. we haven't faced any of the top teams yet. When we face some of the top teams, if we can go away to Etihad and and not like get battered, I, I think we could do the similar thing against Real Madrid. A similar thing versus Bayern. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but the blueprint on how we should perform away from home in these big games, we just did that. True, uh, you know, like, but people but, would I, say you're not brave enough if you're going to go in that approach. But I, I, I would disagree. I, it's there's there's many ways to skin a cat, as they say. Oh, there's many ways to kill a lion. You know, um, you, you can, you can set a trap with meat and capture it, and then do whatever you want. You can set a hole in the ground. You can. I mean, there's many ways to do this thing. My thing is, I know that the league form usually doesn't translate in competition, right? So I'm always very careful. When people say, "Oh, well, in the league, you played a uh, you played um haram ball against Man City. When I play haram ball against um uh Bayern at their home at the Allianz Arena, and it doesn't work, you know what I'm saying? Because this is a cup competition. It's it's you you just have to figure out a way to decide how is this team set up and how am I tweaking in the game, like in between the game. What are we tweaking to frustrate them? If we see that they want to play fast football, then let's do stop and start." Get the ball, kick it out, throwing before they throw again. Stop and start, kick and start. Yeah, niggles here on the hill. Make sure you don't get a yellow, but quick niggles, shoulder to shoulder, push them down, like distract them, disturb them. Be physical. Yeah, mess up their flow. Do whatever you need to do at that point to to settle the game. Because at this stage of the competition, you're not trying to just show, oh, I'm the best team by just out outballing you, bro. Ain't nobody got time for that. You just need a win. Because I've seen win. teams, I've seen teams lose. Four three over two legs, yeah. Because because they couldn't score, uh, at, at, uh, what do you call it in their home game? Yeah, and that's and that's that's the thing about it. That's why I said like we need to do whatever we need to do at the Emirates when they come there to get our get our goals. Be it one, two, three goals. Because and they don't I, have fans. Yeah, up. and I I don't want us to go to the Allianz Arena with with one goal. If we can get two goals, or maybe even if we can get two one or whatever the case is, and then go there and play Diego Simeone style, infuse it, some Mourinho, coupled with some Ateta Haram ball that he played you against know something? Somebody I'm said good. to me, uh, I had Kevin Campbell on a couple of years ago. I think it was last year. And he said to me, Mikel Ateta reminds him less of Arsene Wenger and more of George Graham in the ways that he approaches certain games. Hmm. And and I think that is true. Because when you think about it, City at home, 1-0 to the Arsenal. Some of some of our performances this season against the likes of Tottenham, Manchester United, even though we're at home, we kind of just said, you know what, let's see what you can do with the ball. We we lean on our defense. Yeah. He built the team from the defense upwards. I felt like Arsene Wenger. Never really built a defense. He just was inherited the defense and added pieces here and there. But the thing that he always worked on and always built was the midfield and the attack, where Arteta mm -hmm. started the other way around. Yeah, I mean, we're we're, we're solid right now. Where a uh, Mikel uh, Mikel um, was asked, he was asked by a journalist again. He said, "When did you notice the the friendship and how good Gabriel and Saliba yeah, was?" Yeah, I seen that. Yeah, when I loaned him, when we loaned him to, <laughs> and he said, "I'm joking, I'm joking," but it it tells you something, right? That if the if the if the gaffer believes that the defense is strong and we've seen it, he's proved it this season. You lean on what your strongest point, on on your strongest ability. That's what you lean on. Like when when I did judo actively, I wasn't the strongest, but I knew I was quick. So what I did was I tried to tire people out, and then just go for it and hope in the world that I get my ten points. Just 
tire you out, run around with you, run around with you, and then go for it. Because I knew, like, if I went toe to toe, strength, strength for strength, I don't think I'd be here today. Like, you know, you think you, you think you'd be dead? What? <laughs> Do you know how many people have had concussions? I'd probably be, you know, they'd have knocked me out a lot. Bro, of I've been, I, I got concussions from basketball. Exactly. You can get concussions from any anywhere. Sport. That's what I'm saying. But um, you have to protect let's, yourself. Let's talk about this though. Wolves away, Chelsea and Tottenham. Oof. This right here is in the span of eight days. Mm -hmm. You have these three games, two away games. And if you include the Bayern, that's four away games. That's three away games in a span of like, what is that? 11 days? Yeah. It's peak. I'm yeah, looking I mean at Bayern away and I'm, I'm just going to put that in its own category. We already discussed it. Wolves away, Tottenham away. Chelsea away. Chelsea at home. Now, let's be honest. The form going into these games for Wolves, Tottenham, and Chelsea could be different. But as of right now, if we face Wolves away, it's going to be a tough game, but I expect us to win. Chelsea at home, I think that's going to be probably the easiest out of the three. And then Tottenham away is going to be the toughest. I think all you these see games are getting all nine points from these three. All, the, all these games are going to be tough, but like I said, I, I'm if we're to go by by what has happened in the past and just say like I mean our recent our recent past and our recent history, we've been playing very well in our away games. Arsenal's away form is pretty good. I think we have the if I'm not mistaken, I need to check that stat again. I think we do have the best away form right now, if not first or second in away form. And um that gives me a little bit of confidence. Because one of our toughest rivals, which is City, that game is over. That was an away game that since 2015 we've no not been way able to Deji win. said. No way, Deji said we get 27 from 27. Hey, look, I'm not saying we get 20. I'm just saying if we're to go by the things that we are looking at, if we're to go by just no, no. Start, Deji said Spurs get 27 for 27. Oh yeah, I mean, if he believes that they can do it, then he's they, crazy. He's not getting. He's not getting anything from Tottenham, Arsenal, and and Man City. Maybe Man City, but not Tottenham and uh, not Liverpool and Arsenal. Well, I mean, yeah, like I, I, my thing is just I, right now. If we, if we just look at the things based on what form it is and what they've done, then I can say, you know what, our away game has been good, and I, we should be able to get points on away games as long as we set up right and we're pragmatic. And because there's a lot of games coming thick and fast. We just have to figure a way out to rotate our players to have the best players on the pitch in the first 45 to first 60, 70 minutes and get the business done and get them off to rest and the other guys come in and just show it up. Like that's that would be my approach if I was to, because you'd always want your best players on the pitch to be able to get the business done. If we can get them on the pitch, get the goals in early, get the ones, the twos, the threes in, if we can, if it's two, get the twos in, show it up to about 75 minutes, Bring in fresh legs of defenders, rest some of my attackers. I play six two or whatever. Right. I, Let, know. Let's get into now. Let's get into now. Enough about this. Let's get into the mayhem that has happened in the last 24 hours. So Arsenal drew away at Man City, and people have now started rewriting history and saying that Arsenal's draw at the Etihad was an embarrassment. <laughs> the way that we played was an embarrassment. The fact that we didn't go and push for the win or we didn't go and push and try to get more from it, people were basically saying we parked the bus, showing images of Arsenal players in their own half, the whole 11 in our own half, but ignoring the fact that we haven't conceded a goal to City this season, ignoring the fact that in four games against title rivals, we've only conceded two goals, and those two were to Liverpool, home and away. Ignoring the fact that we picked up four points versus both title rivals, the only time anyone has done that between City and Liverpool was, if I'm not mistaken, Liverpool have actually never done that in a title season where they picked up four points off the off. off City, City. City as well has not done that to Liverpool, even when they've won the league. Um, and and it's just blasphemous. And to the point where I finally have some faith back in humanity because I found somebody who's for once is not biased. And I'm going to play the video because this video... Etihad and I'm concerned. Because this video basically explains everything on how I feel. And I feel like 
he did such a good job. I need to just highlight it. Big up to this guy right here, Oli. I'm concerned at the state of football. If we've landed at the stage now where going to the Etihad and keeping a clean sheet is worthy of criticism. You can't spend... Facts. First of all, going to the Etihad and keeping a clean sheet and getting a point is admirable. And for people to say you, the standard now is you have to win every single game, even the games against your title rivals away or else you're, you're a fraud is ridiculous. Don't you agree? The, the, there you are. You there? The, the, I'm here. The, the ridiculousness is beyond this world. Here's what I would say. They need to hold that same energy for Manchester City who also drew with Arsenal. We, we didn't, they we lost. Didn't, no, no, hold on, hold on. Here's what I'm saying. I mean, here's what I'm saying. Like, they need to hold that same energy. Hear me out. For Man City, who were at home at the Etihad, who could not score against Arsenal. I want to remind people that when Arsenal played Man City at the Emirates, a lot of Man City fans gave this excuse. We didn't have De Bruyne. We didn't have Rodri. Even Arsenal fans said it. You heard Arsenal fans say, but they didn't have Rodri. We should stop counting that as a win. Okay, fair enough. It's okay. It's cool. Now we come to the Etihad. You have your Rodri, you have your KDB, you have your Haaland, you have your um, uh, um, Grealish, David. You had everybody. You had everybody, barring stones and your goalkeeper. But oh, you want to know what, something, bro? We I have got what, a, Pep Guardiola has broken the Premier League so much that now we expect we expect a Premier League title rival. To, to either win or a two-point gap with nine points remaining is considered gifting Liverpool the league. In what world is a two-point lead with nine games remaining gifting your uh, another team uh, the Premier League? It's called a narrative, Igal. Let me tell you what most people wanted. And this is why most people are upset. This is what most of them did. Let me I'll paint the scenario. This is, for those who don't know, this is exactly what happened. Let me paint the scenario. Before, before you do that, can we continue the video? Yes, please. Let's finish the video, yeah. Let's finish that video. 10 years criticizing a team for having a weak backbone or for bottling it or for not getting it done when it matters. You can't criticize them for going to the Etihad and getting a draw, a nil-nil and taking four points off Man City in a season. Are we, what's going on? Liverpool's point earlier this season isn't worth more than Arsenal's because they played better football and went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. By the way, Arsenal had a better XG yesterday than Liverpool did. If that's Ooh. Jose Mourinho who does that yesterday, Everyone is creaming themselves. I know they are. People just wanted a good entertaining game to watch. And I get that. I did too. It was disappointing entertainment-wise. But that's not Arsenal's fault. Arsenal's job is not to go and entertain the neutrals on Super Sunday. It's to go there and not lose to Man City, which they did. It's to go there to keep the title race alive, which they did. People did the same thing when Palace went there a few years ago and won 2-0. Oh, you were so negative. So? You go to the Etihad and get a result. I don't care if I've put 11 men and formed a nice little formation standing up there, people lying across them to cover the whole goal. If I'm keeping a clean sheet, that's a good tactic. It doesn't matter how. The only time Jurgen Klopp has taken four points off Pep Guardiola is in 2016-17, their first season in the Prem, their first full season. He's not done it since. Pep Guardiola has not done it to Jurgen Klopp in the Premier League. Also done to both of them this season. Oh, but they're so negative, girl. I'm not even an Arsenal fan. I just think it's mental to criticise a team for getting any sort of result of the Etihad. Not many teams do. To keep a clean sheet as well? Poof. Facts. That's Facts. it, man. That's, that, that's, I, I said all of that. I said the, those exact, not in those exact same words, but exactly what I said. Like, I don't, here's what it is. Most people believed when we were going to the, the Etihad that Arteta has not learned. Only stupid people believe that someone has not learned a year after a year of something has happened to you before. You don't live with him. You don't know what he's studying. You don't know what's going through his mind. You just base it on the last loss that you saw him have there. You base your belief on that last loss. That has got to be the shallowest way of thinking. Stupidity. That's how most that's how most people were thinking. So the thing is, like Ateta is going to go there. He's going to open up, and they they were hoping Arsenal would get bashed. Because most of them wanted to... So when they realized... Look at this. When they realized that Arsenal did not get bashed and we did not lose under all the pressure with all their best players on the pitch, because I don't want to hear any excuse for City. And we did not lose... Because I had the same argument with Steve yesterday, Big Steve. He came up and wanted to start talking and I gave him facts. I said, you can say what you want, but... Where were, where were you speaking to Big Steve about this? No, I was on... um I was on... um 
uh, Tony's um, stream. Tony had me on his stream and he was in the comments and then he just came on live. Tony sent him the link and he came on live for like five minutes and we went head to head about it. And I told him point blank. I said, hey man, dude, I don't care what you say. You guys lost. As far as, as, far as you're concerned, according to you, you lost. Because according to me, I, I know we have the capacity to come there and beat you, but we didn't do it, but we didn't allow you beat us as well. Anyway, long story short is, when they realized that Arsenal did not lose the game, everybody woke up the next morning and called themselves. Aston Villa fan called Man, Man U fan, Man U fan called City fan, City fan called Liverpool fan, Liverpool fan called Chelsea fan, everybody called and said, let's just tell them that they bottled it because they didn't win. That's, that's all I hear. That's all I hear. Logic like went out the window. <laughs> Logic went out the window. But yeah, it, it's honestly, it's ridiculous. And I just have one more video to play. And I think this is a good video also highlighting how Mikel Arteta stifled Man City. And everyone in the comment section, do me a favor, hit that like button right now. And if you guys want, somebody saying, send me the link. <laughs> Yo, should we send the link out to people, get other people's opinions? That would be nice. Yeah. Uh, let's let's hear from this guy. Arteta was like a prime Simeone yesterday, and I love it. Man City fans, please cry more because this top three head-to-head -head tells its own story. We've been called soft since Vieira left, so to be let's yesterday, let's, let's look it. at that again. Man City fans, please cry more because this top three head-to-head -head tells. Look at that. Arsenal win versus Man City. Man City Liverpool draw one one. Arsenal Liverpool draw one one. Arsenal beat Liverpool three one. Man City and Liverpool draw one one. And then Arsenal, Man City draw nil nil. So you mean to tell me we're the only team that beat the title rivals? We currently have eight points to their three each, but we're the ones getting criticized. You know what, what? You know what I'm coming. What, what I need to say, Egal, to just back us up is I hear there's a comment that it's still points dropped. Yes, it's points dropped. Agreed, but. Hello, the same city that is the almighty city, treble winners, they're going to do a four-peat and a, a, a treble and a four-peat this year. And, and then the same Liverpool who are going to do a, a, a quadruple for Klopp because Klopp is leaving. They have dropped way more points than we have in the, in the three-way head-to-head. And you hear nobody say anything about it. Bro, it's laughable. They're complaining about us parking the bus when Liverpool City have drawn their two games and neither of them have yet to beat anyone in this title race. And and it's always about it's always and it's always about kicking the can forward and just coming up it, with different different excuses is. and excuses and excuses and excuses. There's 27 points to play for. There's nine more games to go in the rest of the season. We're two points behind Liverpool. That is not gifting them the league. All that needs Bro, to happen. It's ridiculous. Let's let's yeah. let's continue the video. We've been called soft since Vieira left, so to be accused of parking the bus really gets me going. It was genius because I have no doubt that Liverpool will drop points and we go back top. To be honest, we had a higher XG than Liverpool did when they. This is actually crazy. Did you know we had a higher XG than Liverpool when they played Man City at the end? Yeah. 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 You know, like, you know me, I look at all these stats and I compare all these things. I, I, that's why I just, I'm, that's why I'm just like, people, people are ridiculous when, when they just talk sometimes. I'm just like, this, this has got to be yeah, the, let's, yeah. Let's they played City, but let's not talk about that because that doesn't suit the narrative. Shout out to Rory Talks Football for a succession of great tweets yesterday. Yesterday was the opposite of Ange Ball because Arteta changes his tactics for each game, depending on the opponent. As demonstrated how he dominated Liverpool for 90 minutes and then we sat in against Manchester City. Mikel Arteta is an elite manager. This right here is the culmination of the exact thing because Ange Postacoglu got praised. He got praised for losing to Chelsea, but playing a high line when he was down to nine men. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Do you remember yeah, the, the, the high line of, of the Tottenham players on the halfway line and how they were praising them? Oh, Ange, Ange ball. Oh, they were going crazy about Ange Postecoglou. But then Mikel Arteta shows the exact opposite: the ability to have different tactics to change your style of play to suit your the purpose that you need for that game. And then to leave with the points, but yet they call him out. Look, it's here's the, the agenda. The agenda must agend when it comes to Arsenal. I, I I don't see the agenda must agend. Like this is something that people just do when it comes to Arsenal. It's it's a case of 
that let me tell you what would have happened. Look, if we went to the Emirates and we won, do you know what the, the narrative would have been? Oh, uh, you beat the weakest city team of, of the last five years. That's the weakest. And KDB was not informed. Uh, Walker was not on the pitch. No, they'll, these are the reasons they'll give. If we lost to them, oh, you lost to the weakest city team at your best height. Look at you. You get they will, listen, they will always find a reason. If we if we, we drew with them, they turned around and what did they say? Oh, look at you. You had the opportunity to go there and win it. And then in the same breath, the same people will say City is the best team in the world. Pep is the best coach. In the same breath. It's it's like my brain, sometimes my brain, my brain has to reset to be like, all right, understand what they're saying, Dio. Try to understand it, but my brain just can't calculate it. Like, how, how, yeah, don't let me say something that will get the channel canceled. <laughs> don't let all me right. say anything. All right, now, before, before we go any further, I'm just going to say this. Guys, do me a favor, hit that like button right now. There's a bunch of you guys in the chat. You haven't hit the like button yet. Please do hit the like button right now. It's absolutely free. Now, the good thing that's happened off the back of these results is people have finally realized how good of a centre-back partnership Gabriel Magalhães and, uh, and Saliba are. Yep. I have been saying it for the longest time. They're the best centre-back partnership in the league. And now you have guys like Liaz coming out and saying it on, 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 on what do you call it, uh, Don Robbie's channel. You have guys like Liaz coming out and saying it. And when people like Liaz say it, or people who have a voice, a, a big voice in the social media game say it, it, it holds a little bit more weight. I'm not saying because Leah said it, it's true, but I'm just simply saying people were comparing. It, ampli it amplified People it. were comparing John Stones and a Ruben Diaz. John Stones played 14 games this season, I think. And Ruben Diaz, who is, let's be let's call a spade a spade. He's not top three center backs in the league this season at all. Yeah. That's Gabriel, Saliba, and Van Dyke. I mean, if we're looking at form, if you're looking strictly at form this season, we you can't, you know, we can't. Um, I don't think be, you can even put him top five. It'll be, it'll be disingenuous to to ignore Saliba and Gabriel this season in form and the way they've been playing. Um, if you're looking at, of course, overall, that's a different conversation entirely. I, I, you know, overall, you need more more data to be able to compare Saliba to Van Dijk and all that. Van Dijk has been a, has an amazing, amazing career. You can't even, you know, but in form this season, we we have to say they are the best pairing. Like, you know, Gabriel and Saliba, there's no... It, it stands to reason why Arsenal has the best defense in the league. Like, there's no point arguing that this season. Now, next season, will it be the same? We don't know. But as of this season, um, it stands to reason to for people to not sit here and, and try and gaslight us into saying they are not. When we can see that numbers don't lie. We have the best defense, the numbers don't lie. We have the best centre-back pairing this season in form, you know, over over the next ten, five, ten years, we can compare all their careers and see who who ended well and who didn't end well. But for now, this season, they 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 don't stand a chance, you know. So yeah. Okay, let's get into the uh, the final segment of the show, ladies and gentlemen. I have a question for you. First one: Any concerns over Alexander Isak to Arsenal for a whopping eighty million pounds? It's too much. He's worth it, in my oh, opinion. It's too much. He's worth it. He's worth it, bro. That's the reality. That's the price you have to pay for these kind of players. He's a quality player. He's worth every single penny, in my opinion. His injury record is scary, Igal. I'm not saying he's not worth it. There's a big difference between buying a Ferrari, right, and driving it on the road, and then it has to go back to the Ferrari store once every month. Like, th th then, then you're not enjoying the use of the car that you bought. My problem is... Isak's injury. I don't have a problem with Isak's technique. I don't have a problem with Isak as a player. I don't have a problem with the fact that I think he will fit He will fit into the Arteta system properly because Arteta knows how to fit, fit these players. What I have a problem is the injury. His injury record is, is abysmal, man. Like, I don't want a player who's out of the game. Look at what Thomas Partey and what we had to deal with. Bro, you want to know rise, One second. You yeah. know he's been injured this season. How many goals does he have already this season? I think he has like 15 goals, if I'm not mistaken. 15 in the league, four in other comps. He has 19 goals with a, a, a good portion of the season injured. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't care about his injury but history. Here what, but here what happens then. One second. I don't care about his injury history. His injury history is associated with a club in Newcastle 
who their whole club is injured at this moment in time. It could just be their club doctors. Also, he was formerly at a club like Real Sociedad. Arsenal, who have the best doctors, I, I believe, if we bring in Alexander Izak, he'll be the best level raiser we could bring in. I don't know about this guy from Sporting. I, I don't know about Ivan Tony anymore. Unfortunately, it's not happening because the club doesn't want Ivan Tony. And with his pace and his and his composure in front of goal, I think 80 million pounds for a Newcastle that only paid like 69 million for him in the first place or however much they paid for him, it's not too far off how much they paid for him and his price tag has definitely gone up. I think 80 million pounds, you're, you're, you're going to struggle to find I, a striker I'm not, I'm not, better I'm not, than I'm Isaac. Not. Here's what I'm saying. There. Egal, here's what I'm saying. When we bring in a striker like that, you're, you have to remember that our game plan will change. That becomes our point man, right? That becomes who everybody, we get used to playing the entire season, trying to feed him the ball to give us this 30 goal, you know, 30 goals a season. That's what I, that's what we're going to do when we bring in a striker like Isak, who we expect to be able to come, drop deep a little bit, you know, play connecting football with the midfielders, drop in front, pick up the ball and score. What happens when he's injured for seven games? You, then you change your format. Oh, again. One second. You know, so, Listen, so, so my point is... One second. It's not the end of the world. I agree with you. It's not the end. I'm just saying, like, I would rather... I we would don't. Rather... We don't need to bring in a player to rely on them as the B end end all. What we need is to add a finishing piece to a puzzle, a piece that fits perfectly. You do not, you do not bring in the final pieces to a puzzle and say, oh, it needs to be durable. It needs, like, let me give you an example. If you are buying a luxury item to go with your beautiful house, like a painting or, or a, a nice sofa, or something like that. Something nice if you're trying to bring it to your house, right? You already have the, the floorboard. You already have the roof. You already have everything. You're just going to go find that nice shiny toy to put in the house to make it look nice. Right now, that striker that we're going to be buying who can get us to 20 goals, I don't want to just bring in any striker that can just come in and fill a gap. It's not about filling a gap. It's about getting somebody who will make everything else look 10 times better. So but that's, but that's, my to, that's my you point. That's my point. If you're asking you need, me to pay... You need to look at it from this perspective. Isaac is Premier League proven. Isaac, it, ha, it might cost us a pretty penny, but we can already see what he's capable of. Isaac is a clinical finisher. Outside of Erling Haaland, he is the best striker in the Premier League. It's well worth the risk. It's well worth the price. Well... I, I I don't I, I don't doubt his um his skill set and I don't doubt what he's able to do. I've just looked at I just I just looked at his stats like way back when when we're linked to him and his injury record, not just at Newcastle. This is why when people say, well, Newcastle, maybe the doctors, not just at Newcastle. <laughs> it's it's been abysmal. That's my problem with it. When you're when you're out of the season half the time, then that's my problem. I like him. Don't get me wrong. I like him. There's a big difference between saying you know, because at the end of the day, we want somebody who is, you know, bro, who is you're talking about 80 million. Wallahi, bro, if it means we have to drop a hundred for Isaac, I would do it. It's not about the money, it's about the profile of player and the fit. He fits perfectly. If Isaac was to join Arsenal right now, the fit alone, the composure, the ability to not only have pace in behind, but to also have the link up. To also have the ability to connect the height, I just think Isaac. I, we're gonna get onto Zubamendi and everything else, but I think if you throw Isaac into this, it's like adding that final gem to the Infinity Gauntlet. In 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 in. in I think in the I think of... I I personally think there are other strikers in the Premier League that I I would go for before Ooh. Isaac. One second. Of other... Outside of Erling Haaland, who's better than him? Darwin Nunes is not better than him. I'll take on Ollie Watkins. Ollie Watkins is not better than him. I no no. Here's what I'm saying. You see, you're, you're talking about the piece that fits as well. Now, I, I, you see, you, you. I'm not. Hear me out. Isaac is an amazing player. He can play link up play. He's, he can dribble. He can shoot. He can score. His in, his injury record again for me is my biggest concern. I would rather a player that is consistent throughout the season gives me 15 goals and can work with my system and I can train him. When Havertz came in, nobody thought Havertz would have the goals that he's got. Once again, what's his, what's his injury you know, history at Newcastle? So 
Sorry? Well, who's, how um, many games has he missed for Newcastle? Uh, who's that? Um, Issa. Yeah, I, I don't I have know. It right I, here. I don't know. Man's missed. I don't know how many games. He, he's missed 10 games for, for Newcastle this season. Last season, mm -hmm. he missed 16, right? Yep. Last season, he had a thigh problem. This season, he had a groin issue. Overall, it's not that ridiculous. Look at that. Real Sociedad. The guy missed five games for Real Sociedad in in two so, in so, how many so, years? So he's missed sixteen and he's missed twenty six games in in the last couple of seasons. Yeah, but a thigh problem. A one second, a thigh problem is not a is it's it's a freak accident, all right? I Hamstring. Know, it, okay. Just look at just I, look at his actual. He, the man has one page. The man has one page. He's been playing football since twenty sixteen. This is not injury problems. This is this not. Guy, see, look. Okay, it's not, it's not crazy. If you say so, I won't argue with you. I Listen, won't argue with you. I get, I get that you're worried about the groin injuries that has been happening this season, but look at this thigh problem, thigh problem. Okay, there's twice knee problem, knee problem, twice. Fair enough, right? Bruise, ill, arm injury. Those, those don't really count. So, is there a reoccurring injury to the point where we should be really worried? I mean, hey, like I said, 106 days last season was was a lot, and then already uh, 54 days this season of missing games. A total of 54. That's that's quite that's quite a bit. I I don't have a problem with his skills, and I think he will fit. Like I said, I think he will fit like a glove in Arsenal. But then when he's not there, we have to then drop off back to our other strikers, and then it becomes a case of whatever it is at that time. But my most important thing is like I would rather a striker who. No matter how bad it is, you're at least more consistent. If we didn't have Declan Rice this season with Thomas Partey's injury, we would have suffered again. And I think the reason why we suffered, uh, like uh, the reason why uh, let me people give, like let me give you an example of a bad injury history. Is this not worse? Who's that? I don't. I don't know who that is. This is Kieran Tierney. He's a defender, bro. And then as well, everybody's different. Like I mean, we're comparing defenders to strikers now. I'm not saying that they're not all footballers, but then let's be... I mean, we have to compare like for like. If you're going to compare a striker... Okay, and, you want me to compare Callum Wilson? You want, no, I I would not take a... Like I said, I told you the people that I think would also fit like a glove. Now, I, I don't have anything against Isak except for that injury. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Everything else I agree with, but his injury record is what I just... Okay, yeah. this is the guy everyone wants. I, everybody's talking your crash, your crash, your crash, your crash. I I've seen your crash's highlight clips. I've watched a few of his videos. I've looked at your crash's stats. I don't know about your crash enough for me to say I want him at Arsenal. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know enough about him to say I would have him at Arsenal. Now, do I trust that if Mikel Arteta gets him, he'll be able to use him correctly? Yes. And the reason I trust him, you want to you want to see his injury record? I don't think he has. He doesn't I'm have. I'm actually enough. shocked. I don't think no injuries in his career. Yeah, there's no injuries in his career. I've looked at that as well. Your crush has not had an injury in his career. Wow. And so, and so that is something else that I looked at and I was like, no, Guys, another thing. Ivan Tony's finished. We're not getting Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony to Arsenal is completely off the table. Also, yeah, so this guy right here, not we're not interested in him anymore. We're not interested <laughs> in Evan Ferguson anymore. It's literally between Jokeridge. And, and now, what's his name? Um, Isaac. Those yeah. are the two. And, and another thing that I, w I wanted to say about your crush, like I said, I don't have enough data. I mean, I, I only have what everybody has seen about him. And I think he's a good player as well. But one thing I want to say is I respect Arteta when it comes to how he changes players. I saw him do it with Granit Xhaka in his last season with Arsenal. I've seen him do it with, um, with Havertz, where everybody said, why did you buy Havertz? And I think that he can do some magic with your crush. All right, let me and let me do let me do a poll in the comment section, guys. Do me a favor. How do we not have a hundred likes yet? Do me a favor. Stop whatever you're doing right now. Hit that like, 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 like the video right now. It takes two seconds. It doesn't even hurt you. It benefits me so much when you guys like the video. You guys don't understand. It helps me out so much. Where it's one a.m. right now in the UK, and we're doing a YouTube video for you guys. Please do hit that like button right now. It's absolutely free. I'm going to put out a poll. Which striker do you guys want? Do you want Isaac or do you want uh, Jokeres? Um, Let me know. But, bro, we're going to have to move on to the next topic um, quickly. Uh, let me know Let me know if you got anything else to say on this. Hello? 
You there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, okay, I'm here. Yeah. Are right, you did... ready to move on to the next topic? Yes, 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 sir. Okay. Um, people, let's get to at least 100 likes. It's absolutely free. And vote in the poll. You guys, you can vote for Izak or Yokoras. Vote in the poll right now, right? Uh, moving on to the next, moving on to the next one. And also, if you guys could do me a favor, if you're, if the chat is working, throw some W's in the chat for my boy Deo here, here at this time. I appreciate your support, bro. W's know? in the shot. W's in the shot. Shot. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's get, let's get to, let's get to the, the, the story of the day with, um, with what's it called? Um, Zubamendi. So the situation with Zubamendi, if I'm not mistaken, Fabrizio Romano was giving us an update. Fabrizio was giving us an update. And this is what Fabrizio had to say. Fabrizio Romano on Zubamendi is still super happy at Real Sociedad. He loves the club, the city, the fans. Of course, if any club will trigger his release clause, he will be up to the player to decide the next move sure uh, he has he's on what he, he yeah but he's surely on the list for but arsenal. he's surely on the on the list yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I arsenal and bayern yeah, yeah so let's wait and see uh on the movement in the summer but zubamendi is not pushing to leave however in case of a proposal he's considering his future that is what's going on right now I, I think I this is. Um, think, I think this is. I a, personally think this deal, they have a pre-agreement similar to Declan Rice. I think they have an agreement I, with the I, player I, I, to come in, and they know what he he wants. The club knows what he wants. They're just going to wait until the summer to trigger the release clause, and he's going to be joining Arsenal in the summer. That's my opinion. That's my guess. Okay, I mean, my my guess is I think his his agents are doing a good job right now. Are putting out this PR to make sure that, for example, like they're saying he's on the list, but nobody, they're making it seem like nobody's sp spoken to him. But if you speak to him, he's willing to consider it, you know. Uh, and this is because they, they, every every team already knows how Ateta feels about Arsenal. Ateta wants players that want to play for Arsenal, so they're saying we're willing to consider anything that comes to us when it does. But for now, I'm happy where I'm at. Now, I think that if we are going to sign Dubimendi, we keep Jorginho for one more year. And we keep party for one more year. I I really strongly believe that. Like if we're if we are going to sign to Bemendi, we still need to have those two players in our team. Because next season, we're going to we need we're, we're going to need to be competing on all four fronts, and we should have at least at least the, the experience of the Jorginhos with the younglings of the Zubemendis coming in, and the same thing with Partey's Partey's experience. I will be able to compete on all four fronts in that in that in that position. So yeah, I think I think he should I think he will come to Arsenal um, based on the links. But it's all still dependent on what happens at the end of the day. When the players start saying, "I'm ha still happy at the club. I love the fans. I want to be here," but I'll consider a proposal. You might be chasing very potential people who, like Arteta and Edu who are firm on. They want to know if you want to play for the club. But it's all going to be dependent on when they speak I, with him. I directly. watched Supermendi. He's like a younger Jorginho with more athleticism. Yeah. He's yeah, a younger he is. Jorginho with more athleticism. If we bring in Zubamendi, he's not replacing Partey. I think if we go and get, um, what's it called, Everton's Onana, that's Partey's replacement. Maybe not. No, no I'm, not saying, I'm not saying replacement. I was just saying, like, we, we'll have solid, like, now Declan can go to, Zubamendi and Declan can play together sometimes. You can have Declan go to eight, Zubamendi drop into that. Zubamendi is going to cost around 52 million. You know, so, yeah. I think, what are we going to do with the likes of Vieira, Emma Smith Rowe, Reese Nelson? These guys are going to have to leave. I think Reese is going to leave. I think Reese is going to leave. Fabio Vieira, honestly, this coming season, I don't know. Left to me, left to me, I would, I would get rid of him if I could. But he's supposed to be this, the person to, you know, go up with Odegaard toe to toe. You know, that's that's why I see him. And um, don't don't bring me no Bonafé right now. What Leverkusen are doing, 
They're on yeah, the I, next level. But Bonafé, uh, no. I think ESR as well. Um, ES, ESR is is on his way out of the club. I think he's on his way out of the club. Eddie Eddie's on his way out. El Nenny's on his way out. Um, what's his name again? Uh, Cedric is on his way out. Uh, yeah. All those guys, I, I want them out. In fact, yeah. But, ugh. A lot, a lot of these guys are on the way out of the club. That's the reality. Um, but somebody who is on his way back, are we going to ever see Timber? Because reports are now that he could be back end of the season. Yes, I, I hear that he's he. I think he's he, probably... he's just trying to make it back in time for the Euros. But honestly, the club might not allow him to play in the Euros. Do you think that would be a mistake? I don't. I mean, right now, from what I gathered and the, all the news I've read, he's supposedly training with the under 21s because they want to give him a bunch of game time. And I'm mean, sorry, he's going to play with the under 21s a couple of games. I think this coming week, um, or these coming weeks, and they want to use that to sharpen up because from that kind of injury, you need some game time before you jump onto the onto the field like fully. So if he does that this couple of weeks, I don't think he'll be. It, the, the final stage is the most important aspect of this thing. You've gone through all of this. The last thing you want to do is throw him in and let him get, let that thing start Hurt. again. You know, Hurt. so um, playing the games with the under 21 would be a great way to give him game time because he's training with the first team consistently, as we've seen in all the videos. He's training with the first team, which means he's working the tactics with them. He knows exactly where he's going to be when he needs to be there. It's just the amount of game time. So if he plays with the under 21, a bunch of game time, gets himself up to speed. He's still training with the first team. He knows exactly where he fits, where he's supposed to play. I think he'll be he'll be up and running for the Euros, you know. I personally think Timber is unlikely to see him for a while. And even when we do see him, he's just going to be a bench option. He's not going to really have much of an impact this season. I don't, don't be no, don't not, be this season, not this season. Don't be surprised if he has no impact this season. No, no, not this season. That's why I said, like, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying he's going to play a bunch of under-21 games, but keep training with the first team to understand where his positioning should be because that's what they do in training. It's like, all right, he's going to keep training with them. So whenever he does come back, he's got his fitness level up because he's been playing with the under-21s, but he's also trained with the first team. So when he does come back, his impact will be almost immediate. It's not going to be like, oh, I didn't know where I'm going to be playing and I don't know how Ateta wants to use me. No. Because you're training with them and you're, you're practicing what you're supposed to do, start you know all the tactics and all that with the first team. So I think that would be um, oh uh, yeah, he's he's going to be massive next season. He's going to be massive next season. I'm not expecting him back this season, but I like the fact that he's training with the first team now. Season is almost over. He can get all that training in while he gets to play with the under 21s to actually boost up his game time. Hmm. Anyways, bro, I'm going to wrap it up here. But before we wrap it up, I'm just going to say something. Will Arsenal dethrone Man City or will Liverpool win or will Man City win? What do you think is going to happen, man? I'm going to say it again boldly. Everybody has been saying their own piece. We're winning the league this season. We're winning the league this season. I mean, like, I, I, I don't want to sound arrogant or anything, but if what Mikel Arteta showed me at City is he can be pragmatic in every game which means he knows the games that he needs to go gone hole and he knows the games where he needs to sit back, relax, and just do what he needs to do to get the three points. Yeah. And, and, and unfortunately, and, unfortunately, I just want to let everyone in the chat know that we could not uh, uh, send out the link today, but maybe I'll do a call-in show another day. But Deo, I really do appreciate you jumping on. It's been, a time it's been, it's been an hour and 14 minutes. And, and it's been a great stream. Do me a favor, guys. Hit that like button. It's absolutely free. It doesn't cost a penny. So please do hit that like button right now. Let me do a shameless plug. Guys, yeah. I, you can go follow my channel. I The kind of content that I do, I don't do live streams because I, you know, I leave that to the chairman, like Igal and the rest of them who know exactly what What's your what channel called do. again? Banta on the pitch. Um, the kind of content I, I put out is going to be, it, it's long form. Right put now, the link long... in the description quickly so I can uh, I can plug it. All right, let me let me put it right here. It's, uh... Let's get it. But yo, people, what do you call it? Let me just see something. What what am I doing? As no, I, I promise, like, and even even it's it, it was it's been a weird it's, these past few months and me, knowing. I'm... Yo, I'm not gonna lie. I'm just rambling a little bit. But let me get let me get let me get uh the link out in the chat. 
did you have anything else to say before we go? No, I was just saying like, yeah, so you expect content like immersive technology. I, I and put how the it, link in the description, by the way. Yeah, immersive technology on how it will improve VAR in like football, stuff like that. Like I do immersive technology work. And so I'm going to bring a lot of VR, AR talking points and VFX work to like the, the video. There is a very short video on how fast Odegaard's penalty was at the Porto game. That's all it is. Like the speed of the of Odegaard's penalty and how fast it was. Mm. So, yeah. Also, there was a video that I did on my channel and I just want everyone to go see. Uh, please do go check this out. So I was with. I was with the boys yesterday on Vibes from the Six, and Rack said this, and it blew my mind because I never thought about it from this perspective. Arsenal, whether it be this season or not, Arsenal are coming. And it won't be long before they win the league. It won't be long yeah. before they win the league. I agree. Because, because, yeah. the, the, because the fact is, right, Klopp is leaving, and Vader, as much as he would, he would, he would love to feel Pep to hang about, He's not going to be here in five years, right? He's you don't, don't know that. I know, but I. But do you, do you really? Just because we're you, scarred with your manager leaving no, early, no, don't but, put that on mine. No, but, but, that's, but that's not the reason. I put out. I made a whole video on this. You guys can go check it out right now. The video is out right now on the channel. It's 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 the it's the number one featured video on the channel. Go check it out. It was really good in depth argument over. Arsenal's future and how we could take over the Premier League and this was brought to me by a Liverpool fan and you know what I've always said to myself people keep making fun of us bottling it but are they just afraid that we're the next ones up well they know what the, they know what the next ones up they know and that's why the, and that's why they're all they, they already know you know and so like I've said it before and I'll say it again why well, the next ones up and uh whether they like it or not the crown is ours to take, and this is how this is. This is Future's for you, Chelsea. Not guaranteed. Future is not guaranteed. This is for that. you, Chelsea fans. <laughs> Can beat yourselves <laughs> while you're at it. Hey, let, let's let's get it going. You guys have yourselves a wonderful day. I'm out of here, people. Love for the love, and Dayo, big up to you for always jumping on. I appreciate it. Peace for having me. Yo, by the way, I'm going to send you guys to Staffy's channel. Do me a favor. Say Raid. Say we're here from EGTV. Uh, say, say no, not EG. Say we're here from Egal Talks Football. Or, or just say Egal sent me in the chat when you go to Staffy's channel. Big up, everyone.